The Czech Republic, a former communist state, is home to the IRCC, the Institute to Research the Crimes of Communism. And today we're talking with Pavel Perubiak, a senior analyst at the IRCC, and his research is focused on China, and he's going to talk about some of the shocking revelations that the IRCC have published in their latest reports. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you, too. You're living in a former communist country and you're researching these crimes. Can you talk a little bit about why it's important for crimes of communism be, to be looked at in the first place, but particularly why you in the Czech Republic? Many countries which, which are actually not post-communist worldwide, like the United States and others, they seemingly consider when it comes to socialism, communism or Medicare, uh, only the benefits, not the costs. I think it's the cost of... Uh, either be living in freedom and human nature or not. Because when it comes to social, socialism and communism, uh, all these systems, they, uh, they use the foundation, then human nature is not good in general, that you have to restrain it, or that you have to censor all kinds of information, and that, you, and that one man or few men at the top are actually responsible for preserving the kind of human nature they want. So uh, I, I don't think that's actually beneficial at all. And that's uh, how, how China today looks and how pretty much any country which uses communism looks. So being in a post-communist country, is there an intrinsic knowledge or experience among the Czech people? Are they more aware of, of, of these things? Yeah, I think we are certainly more aware. Actually, if you want to uh, put uh, some politician in Czech Republic down, you would dig into his past and then find out that he was uh, in the Communist Party in the past. And that's pretty much enough other countries which are actually, which have inclinations towards socialism or communism are a bit naive because they always think that they would do the socialism or communism, but in some kind of better way. But there is never any better way to do it. As your institute is researching crimes of communism, you say that you're researching current crimes of communism today and your focus is on China. Can you talk about why China? Uh, it's because China is perhaps the finest example of how things can go bad. It's the only communist country which, which is functioning in the uh, cap global system of capitalism, uh, which has relations uh, to all kinds of countries and which is not, not uh, close to itself, like uh, North Korea. So when it comes to China, we can see that uh, no matter how you try to do things, as long as your foundation is bad, everything will go bad as well. You've released two reports in the last year. One of them is specifically on the the crime of forced organ harvesting in China. You didn't look into the sources of organs, which uh, has been well researched and clearly documented that that is, and, and clearly stated that it is a crime against humanity. So you've gone that next step. You didn't look into the brokers or the middleman who was selling organs, but you looked into the Western companies. I find that very interesting. And in your report, you stated that it's not just drugs that these companies are providing to China, but things like kidney boxes, robot surgeons, bio glue. Oh my goodness, when I saw all these, these things, it started to give me a picture of that. And you asked the questions of are uh, Western companies partaking in this crime? And if yes, are they doing it consciously or unconsciously? When you have to uh, take the organ uh, from a prison and uh, in 20 minutes put it into hospital, you have to use the, an organ preservation system. And so it means that if you sell any kind of organ preservation systems to China, it uh, doesn't matter what kind of uh, it for kidneys or lungs or whatever, in the end, they will use these kind of systems for the illegal uh, organ trans transplantations as well. So you don't have uh, you don't have, you don't have a choice in that matter. You simply do uh, pro uh, provide China with transplant products, and China just have to use them for the illegal, illegal side of it as well. I was really shocked to read the statistic you put in there that was published uh, by the Sweden Council for Business and Investments, who believe that, and I'm quoting here up to 92% of the medical technology devices in China come from foreign companies. Basically, you're saying that they can only do these transplantations and this crime against humanity by using Western medical technology devices. I mean, that's just shocking, isn't it? Yeah, I think it actually changes uh, the whole story of the uh, criminal activity behind the organ harvesting. 
if we were to imagine, let's, let's assume that the group of people who are behind it all in China uh, would be uh, contract killers, then the situation is that actually we are providing the contract killer with clients from at least 20 countries who, tra who, who actually uh, want him to kill someone uh, unknowingly, and we are also providing the contract killer with the weapons he uses uh, for these crimes. So it's completely in our, in our hands. If the Western companies, the Western governments and researchers and actors would just sit down all together, they would actually be able to come up with certain ways of how to completely restrain it or almost stop this crime. Contract killers. Okay, so if China is the contract killers, we give them the guns and we give them the clients, <laughs> the cl the clients and, and the clients who want the person killed and, um, and they get paid. We arrange for them to be paid, right? Because there's brokers. You had a form. Uh, there was a, in, in the report, there's a form. Can you talk about that form and these country options where these transplants are not just being done in China? I think the general assumption is that when it comes to transplant tourism, uh, it's always happening in the country of the donor. But as Yusuke Shimazono, a Japanese doctor, points out uh, at the uh, World Health Organization headquarters, it's actually happening often in a third county, not the one of the donor or the one of the recipient. Uh, and that is due to certain things. For example, there are uh, many uh, medical tourist companies all over the world. Uh, let me give an example. One of them is called Lemon Group. It's based in China, but has headquarters in five other countries like the UK, US, or even Czech Republic, strangely. And what this means is that uh, if a US patient uh, wanted to have an organ, uh, he can travel to the UK, where he, uh, where, where he would feel more safe about the whole thing, and he can speak in, uh, in English with the doctors, and it, it just seems more uh, secure. And the Chinese organ would be provided from China. Uh, that means that even during this coronavirus crisis, it is now still possible to get a Chinese organ, even if you are forbidden from traveling to China. Do we know the countries that are doing surgery using Chinese organs? Uh, we have tried very hard to look into it, uh, but uh, we are really unable to obtain any information. Can you talk a bit about the challenges that you face in, in doing this this research to get the information? Because the whole issue is in, in the hands of the West, uh, you actually can, you can obtain any kind of information as the as long as the West will speak to you. You've named companies, you've, you've got a big list of companies and what their uh, items they're supplying to China that are used for transplantation. What what criticisms have you received? Uh, well, first, I think that um, there uh, was and could, could not be much criticism in general because the sources we use are kind of bulletproof. So the only criticism um, we have got uh, was from one UK media. That's because for 20 companies, we have uh, all kinds of information. We have many sources of evidence, such as uh, from the Chinese medical studies, from the English medical studies, uh, from the annual reports of the companies and so on. But for the eight companies, we have only one or two sources saying they do transplant business in China. So we use them just to give an example that there obviously will be more such companies and that uh, our report is not some final list of them. And we were criticized a bit by this media that uh, we use these kinds of examples. I think it's not as much uh, a credible criticism as it uh, might be otherwise. What has been the response? One of the um, responses we were after were from the, many, well, from the Western companies. Because we've noticed that uh, if this kind of sector were to speak up, you can obtain so, so much valuable information. So we actually asked each and every one of them for any kind of feedback and except two of them stayed silent, but one of them called the Russia, it's a pretty big one, stated that uh, they supported in 2007 the Chinese law forbidding transplant tourism, which obviously is kind of lie. So it seems that actually China is lying to Western companies in general and might be providing them false information, which would actually not be a surprise, I think, for anyone. Simply put, we would really want to achieve that the companies, the doctors, and the governments would just sit down together and uh, come up with uh, certain solutions, because these solutions do exist. Basically, all the data that we need to show how many numbers, of, real numbers of organ transplants happening in China, 
are in that's in the hands of these Western companies that are providing almost a hundred percent of the tools, resources, medical technology for China to do that. If they provided that data, what do you think could be done with that information? If just one company were to speak up, I think the whole, whole story would change from the perspective that we have to plead with China to actually do something finally, to give us some information, to let us investigate as if China would be some some superior of ours. And it would change to the fact that we can just ask our own companies. So it, it would just take one one first company to speak up for actually the whole situation to rapidly change. Pavel, you've given me this really interesting insight that I'm 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 so glad to hear because this is such a sometimes just such a devastating topic when you think that this crime is so huge, uh, so difficult to tackle, uh, so impossible to penetrate the lack of transparency that created by the Chinese Communist Party. Yet you've said these two things. I'm going to repeat them so that I'm getting clear on it myself. Um, and I'd, I'd love to love to everyone watching, please put your comments below, ask your questions, your skepticisms, put them down there so that we can get more information on this. So basically two things that I'm getting here is you're, we outside of China, we as in everybody outside of China, are providing the ammunition and the, the recipients and paying China to kill on demand. If we didn't provide those things, they couldn't do it. And number two, we have the information. So anyone who says that how many transplants are really being done in China, we don't know. Uh, we have to ask the Chinese government. No, we don't. Because the Western companies actually have the answer. Do you know these companies? Do you know someone who works there? I'm going to read out the list of companies. You'll find this in the IRCC report. Okay, for organ preservation, Organ OX from the UK, XVIVO Perfusion in Sweden, Organ Recovery Systems USA, Water Medical Systems USA, Bridge to Life United Kingdom, Lifeline Scientific China and USA, Organ Assist Netherlands, Organ Transport Systems USA. There's more. Immunosuppressive drugs, Estellas in Japan, Pfizer USA, Veloxis, Japan, Denmark, Novartis, Switzerland, Roche, Switzerland, Sanofi, France. These are the ammunitions, these are the tools, these are the things they need are essential for organ transplantation. And we know in China, organ transplantation does not come from voluntary donors. Okay. Transplant Diagnostics, Ona Lambda, USA, Danaher, USA, Abbott Laboratories, USA, Hologic, USA, Medical Robots Used for Transplantation, Intuitive Surgical, USA. Other products, Cryolife, USA, that's awaiting approval in China. Transplant Diagnostic Leaders with presence in China, but with no specific product confirmed. Thermo Fisher Scientific, USA, Chiagen, NV, Netherlands, not sure if I'm saying that right, Immucor USA, Illumina USA, BioRad Laboratories Inc. USA, Beckton Dickinson and Company USA, BioMerio SA France, Affymetrix USA. If you know these companies, send them the IRCC report. Ask them to disclose their data. They are giving the ammunition to China to kill. But as Pavel said, they really can do something good here. They have the opportunity to help stop this. Pavel, thank you so much for talking with us today. Really appreciate it and best of luck for the rest of your work. Thank you as well. We'll be following up on this more in future videos, so please subscribe to our channel and share this video. Thanks again for watching. Stay well and stay safe.